Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Jewel Collins Smith Museum of Fine Art. Uh, my name is Chris Hecox, and I'm the executive director of the Jay and Susie Gouge Performing Arts Center across the street. I uh, just wanted to welcome everyone to this, e to this evening um, and wanted to thank everyone here that is a member and a sponsor and a donor to the University and the Museum. Thank you for your support and also the support of the Phillips Education Fund, which is supporting this, this exhibition as well. Um, we just wanted to do a couple of thank yous and a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, this exhibition would not um, be up if it wasn't for the curatorial work of Dennis Harper. So thank you, Dennis, for all of your work. Yes. Um, it was uh, installed by Chris Carr and his great work as well. Uh, Danielle Funderburk and Jessica Hughes with all the logistical work that it takes to, to put up an exhibition of this caliber and as well as our design and our marketing team, which includes Aaron LaRue, Tasha Watson, Charlotte Hendricks, and Jonathan Osborne. So, um, in addition to the exhibition and the evening, uh, today's program, or this evening's program, there are a number of supporting programs um, around this exhibition that I just wanted to mention to you so that you can put them in your calendar. So on Saturday, which is tomorrow, from 10 to 1, we have a day with Walter Anderson. It's a family day. So there are hands-on activities. Um, author Hester Bass will be reading the book she wrote for children, The Secret uh, World of Walter Anderson, and I believe that uh, um, Hester is here this evening. Is that correct? Yes, Hester, there she is. Yes. So thank you, Hester. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you. And, um, and with that, you'll be able to follow in the footsteps of Walter Anderson by packing a paper sack lunch and going into the world to draw the wonders of nature. So it should be a nice day tomorrow. I think it's going to be in the 60s with no rain. So come on out, bring your families, tell everybody, tell your neighbors to come out. Um, Scott Bishop, as well, has put together two art cafes, uh, the first one being Thursday, November 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, Kevin O'Brien, the director of the Orr O'Keefe Museum of Art, will give a talk on George Orr, the world's first abstractionist art potter. And then the next week on Thursday, November 8th at 6 p.m., Jake Fussell, who's a musician and scholar of Southern Music, will give a talk modeled on his radio program, Fall Line Radio, exploring the musical side um, of the culture milieu in which Walter Anderson lived and worked. So there's three great programs surrounding this in the next few weeks. We welcome everyone to come and attend. Um, also, after this evening, after um, this program, we welcome everyone. There's a reception afterwards. Um, please stay, enjoy um, some hors d'oeuvres, a glass of wine, and, uh, and take in this opening of this wonderful exhibition. So please stay. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dennis Harper, our curator of collections and exhibitions. Thank you, everyone, for coming this evening. So I get to thank, uh, to thank some people, too. Um, actually, just one very important person who, without her encouragement, her accommodation, and her enthusiasm, we wouldn't have this exhibition here. And that's our guest speaker, Maddie Codling. Um, when I approached her some years ago uh, about doing an exhibition here, there had been a couple of smaller traveling exhibitions going around the Southeast. And I wanted something just a little bit larger, a little more inclusive. And I called up Maddie and proposed that idea to her. And she said, yeah, come on down. And so she was very um, joyful and um, a pleasure to meet and to take me through the vaults where we could look through some of the things in the traveling exhibitions that hadn't been on view and to help craft this exhibition that gives a really broader look at uh, Walter Anderson's work from earliest period right up to nearly the very end of his life. So uh, thank you, Maddie, for allowing me that inside look and for working with me uh, on putting this together. So let me tell you a little bit about Maddie before she comes up. She completed her undergraduate work at the University of Mississippi, where she double majored in art history and anthropology. She received her master's degree in art history from Florida State University, with a specialization in museum studies. Now her subject specialization encompasses not only um, Southern art, but Southern architecture, material culture of the African diaspora, 
She's participated in several archeological digs, including the Carson Burial Mounds, located outside of Clarksdale, Mississippi. And she's completed several field studies of the African dias uh, diaspora uh, cemeteries, uh, diaspora uh, cemeteries around the Taylor Medal from the University of Mississippi, scholarly experts while at University of Mississippi Museum. And of course, as evident in our current exhibition and the topic that you see on screen here, her present work revolves around the art and legacy of Walter Inglis Anderson, American master painter. So please join me in giving an extremely warm welcome to Maddie Codling. Good evening. Well, I have some thank yous as well. Thank you very much to uh, Dennis Harper for working with me and for answering all of my questions and um, my eccentric suggestions. And we, I think we've pulled something together really exciting. I hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks also to Scott Bishop for putting together my visit here. And uh, I was able to meet with your docents here at the museum and some pleasure for me. So thank you very much. Uh, as Dennis mentioned, I am Mississippi through and through, and uh, so the title of today's talk is also Mississippi Mystic, The Life and Work of Walter Inglis Anderson. Um, and before we begin, uh, I just want to kind of address Walter's state within the realm of art history. So despite his popularity in the Southeast, he's, he's still relatively unknown for the art world. Uh, so some of the questions that I often get are, who is this man? Why is he important? And then also, how do I read that work? How do I read this work? And so I really think that it's part of truly examining these individual works. And some of them, as you'll see in the galleries, are very small. They're about eight and a half by 11. Uh, some are, are dirty, some are scratched. Um, some have burn marks. Uh, there are fingerprints on them. And those are all records of this artist's uh, creative process. And we'll learn a little bit. For Walter Anderson, all things were connected. Like a spiral begins at a single point and then works outward further and further, affecting the continuation of that line wider and wider, so humans and nature are related to one another. Anderson often described himself as the perpetual observer, taking time to study the movements of plants and animals, seeking out a kind of divine connection between himself and nature. Anderson 